the talk is going to be on the sleepy model of consensus, and then she is going to give a talk. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, I'll be talking about the sleeping model of consensus, and this is joint work with Rafael Paz. Okay, so this happened. In, <laughs> this happened in May, May, uh, earlier this year. Uh, British Airways had an outage, and this was what the airport was like. Uh, people were stuck there, and this happened because of a systems failure. And something strikingly similar happened to Delta Airlines in, I guess, September last year. Right, There was this one day where all the flights were canceled, everything was shut down, like all the booking systems were shut down, and Delta Airlines suffered uh, 100 million US dollars of loss in revenue because of this system failure. Okay, so the moral of this story is that we need replication and robustness. This is a very simple idea, but it is precisely this very simple idea that gave birth to an entire area of research called distributed systems, and there has been uh, 30 years of work in this area. Okay, so in, in distributed systems, we care about a very important abstraction called state machine replication. It is also um, referred to as linearly ordered log or consensus. In state machine replication, imagine we have a set of servers. Right? In, in this case, we have Google Wallet servers. So Google Wallet, for instance, wants to avoid the kind of disaster that happened to uh, Delta Airlines. Um, so these set of servers, let's imagine they want to agree on, on an ever-growing linearly ordered log of transactions. OK. There are two very important security properties that we care about, namely consistency and lightness. Consistency says that all the honest nodes must agree on the log. Uh, because the network del has delay, it could be, let's say, the last log is a little longer than mine, but nonetheless, our logs have to be predictions of each other. Okay. So Leibniz says that whenever a client submits a transaction, the transaction has to appear in all of the honest nodes' logs fairly quickly. Okay. Um, in the beginning, this may seem deceptively simple, right? So after all, what is difficult about reaching consensus on a linearly ordered log? Uh, indeed, the problem would have been trivial if all the nodes that are honest and behave correctly. Uh, but if it, it is the case that a subset of these nodes can be corrupt and these corrupt nodes can behave arbitrarily, then as it turns out, the problem becomes highly non-trivial and that's why you know, there's so much work in, in this space. Okay, so for the rest of the talk, whenever I mention consensus, I specifically mean state machine replication. Uh, state machine replication is not new, and in fact, um, it is widely applied in practice. Um, for example, Google has a service called Chappie, and the car protocol behind Chappie is um, a Paxos-like consensus protocol that is uh, tolerant of crash bugs. Um, and of course, whatever Google does, all the Silicon Valley companies have to copy, right? So the Roughly speaking, the open source counterpart uh, of Chubby is Apache Zookeeper, and pretty much every other Silicon Valley company become, besides Google uh, adopts Apache Zookeeper to uh, replicate their computing infrastructure. Uh, when traditionally, when we talk about consensus, the kind of scenario that conjures up in our minds is exactly what I talk about. Uh, there's like a single organization, uh, there are a dozen nodes, and these nodes are interconnected with fast local area network. Um, and what really changed our view of distributed consensus is cryptocurrencies. This is like extremely exciting. You know, we have Bitcoin, Ethereum, and now we can do consensus on a large scale on, over the internet. Okay, so this is really amazing. And you know, there's a lot of excitement in the space, for instance. And this is a picture I found online uh, of uh, industry consortiums. And these consortiums are trying to build blockchains for banks. Uh, and these banks want to build a distributed ledger amongst themselves. Uh, for instance, I talked to companies that are trying to roll out solutions for banks in China. Right? The scale we are looking at is um, in China, there's like uh, hundreds of banks. And if each bank implies 
uh, 10 nodes, the price 10 nodes, we can easily have like 1,000 node scale. So everything is a lot larger than classical deployments and it's among multiple organizations. Uh, so interestingly, when you talk to blockchain cryptocurrency people, it seems like the common wisdom is that a classical consensus protocols aren't robust enough for these large-scale deployments. And people want blockchains. Okay. Um, this, this is kind of like a very nice intuition, but it's also not very satisfying because for one thing, it doesn't answer the question, what kind of robustness properties do we want in this large-scale deployment? Right? It, it doesn't articulate what robustness means. Um, in the rest of the talk, I'm going to try to answer these questions, or at least partially. So first, I'll talk about what, uh, how, how do we define robustness. I'll give one possible definition. Um, and then I'll talk about why classical protocols fails to achieve this notion of robustness. And then in the end, I'll answer the question, how can we achieve this robustness notion? Okay, so what is robust? Uh, so before I begin, I wanted to say like, um, cryptocurrency is an interesting area because it seems like the empirical success is um, faster, it outstrips our scientific understanding. Right? So I have this colleague who made an interesting comment. Um, traditionally, when you ask uh, a researcher, let's say a professor in a university, you know, we have this technology, what is the gap from the research uh, prototype till the technology matures and gets deployed in practice? Like uh, Traditionally, you accept you'd expect an answer between like five to 10 years. But for cryptocurrency, if you try to answer this question, it's like negative six months. Okay. All right. So let, let's begin with the first question. So exactly what robustness properties do we care about for these large scale deployments? Um, and let me make an analogy. Suppose we want to have um, 300 million people vote. What can happen? What will happen is that only 160 million of them will show up, right? Not everyone's going to show up. Um, and perhaps, you know, we can hope that among the people who do show up, maybe the majority are honest. Because if, let's like, say, the majority are corrupt, you know, who, who knows uh, what will happen? Like, who will be the next U.S. president? <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, so in this paper, we, we define this as a new model for distributed consensus called the sleepy model. Um, and in the sleepy model, we can consider that nodes, they're either sleepy, which means they're offline, or they're active, uh, or, or, or we also call it awake. Um, and you know, sometimes nodes can go to sleep and then they can wake up later, right? So when the prince uh, kisses the uh, snow white, she wakes up. Um, and the point is that when you wake up, you are supposed to continue to enjoy consistency and life disparities. And this is not a requirement in classical consensus. Right? In classical consensus, if I ever go to sleep, then I'm automatically treated as corrupt. It's treated as a crash fault. And later when I do wake up again, I don't enjoy any of these consistency and life disparities anymore. Okay. So th this is just um, further clarifications on the model. I gave this talk in Stanford. That's why Dan Bonet is the adversary. Uh, OK. Um, malicious nodes, as we said, can behave arbitrarily. The adversary can delay or reorder messages, but up to some um, a narrow delay upper bound. And this that narrow delay upper bound is known to the protocol. So messages can be, let's say, delayed for a most delta number of months. Um, and the protocol knows exactly what this maximum delay is. And all the nodes that are online can receive messages from other honest nodes within this maximum delay. Okay, so this is some uh, clarif clarification. Uh, a meaningful question that we can ask in this model is can we reach consensus if 51% of the online nodes are honest? Right? Not, now, not everyone can be online, but we want that you know, among the online people, maybe the majority of them are honest. Um, before, I answer this question, I want to mention that this is actually the best you can hope for. Because if, um, in our paper, we have an impossibility result showing that if less than the majority, if, um, if less than 50% of the online nodes are honest, then consensus is impossible in the sleepy model. This is also very interesting because if you contrast it with the classical setting, 
In the classical setting, if you have a PKI, you can tolerate arbitrary many faults. But here, even if you have a PKI, this impossibility result will hold. So that's why the model is fundamentally different from classical. Um, okay. So when I ask this question, here are some of these implicit assumptions that I'm making. Um, first, the protocol doesn't know how many how many nodes are going to show up. It could be that um, you know 30 percent is going to show up. It, it could be maybe 99 percent are going to show up. Maybe I'm expecting 99% to show up, but only 1% showed up. Nonetheless, even if only 1% showed up, we want the 1% people that showed up to still be able to reach agreement. Okay. And maybe you know you didn't show up in the beginning, but you somehow you somehow you join later, and, and that's okay because as soon as you join, and as long as you know you are an honest node, you should be able to um, enjoy the consistency and life with Sandy. Okay. So the interesting thing is that this seems like a very simple and very natural question, right? And you would expect that with 30 years of work in this space, uh, such a question should have been resolved. But the surprising bit is that that's not the case. And as it turns out, all the classical protocols fail in this model. Um, and moreover, not only do they fail, none of these protocols work, even if we are willing to assume that 99% of the online nodes are honest. So that's a very strong statement. Um, okay, I'm going to very quickly explain why classical protocols don't work. Um, there are two types of classical protocols, synchronous and asynchronous. In the synchronous model, the messages are delivered immediately in the next round. In the asynchronous model, you know, the message can take some unknown amount of delay, and the protocol doesn't know how long the delay is. Okay, so why do classical synchronous protocols fail. And the fundamental reason is that the sleepiness is some kind of asynchrony, right? Because imagine I go to sleep now and I wake up later. And when I wake up, I receive all the cute depending messages. So that's kind of modeling some kind of asynchrony behavior where the, where the message can be delayed by the duration of the sleep. Um, and for these classical protocols that expect synchrony assumptions to work, these protocols don't work um, in the sleeping model. Um, and maybe the more interesting question is why these classical, uh, as classical asynchronous protocols also don't work in the, in the sleepy setting. And the reason is that um, in the classical models, if the node goes to sleep, it will automatically be treated as corrupt. Right, so imagine um, I have like a, so typically the way these asynchronous protocols work is that I would ask people to vote and I'm going to collect two thirds of the people to vote um, and then I make progress. But if it so happens that only 1% of the people showed up, I would never, you know, even if I waited for infinitely long, I would never be able to collect two thirds of the people to vote. So the protocol will get stuck there. Okay, and the, the fundamental problem here is that we don't know how many people are going to show up a priori. Okay, so to quickly recap, I've explained one specific notion of robustness and why classical protocols all fail. And I will quickly, um, for the remaining, how many minutes? For the remaining huh? 12 minutes, I will try to um, talk about how we can achieve this notion of robustness. Okay, so this is just the note to say, in this talk I only mentioned one notion of robustness, but there are other notions, um, but they can be published off of separate talks. Okay, all right, so how can we achieve robustness? Uh, we are going to draw inspiration from, you know, cryptocurrencies again. Um, the community's wisdom is that Bitcoin's Nakamoto consensus is very, very robust. And in fact, the amazing thing is that Bitcoin actually has been up and running for um, more than, maybe now it's nine years, for more than nine years, right? And um, maybe there, there were some minor attacks, but nothing really major, and that's why Bitcoin is referred to as the honey badger of money. The honey badger is a very robust animal. Okay. 
the good news is that we can actually now uh, mathematically prove that Bitcoin's blockchain protocol uh, indeed is capable of uh, reaching consensus when 51% of the online nodes are honest. So that's good. But on the other hand, this protocol is hugely wasteful, right? Um, I recently read a report saying that Bitcoin's electricity consumption um, is more than that of um, Ireland. So we certainly don't want to run a protocol like this. And this is just for confirming like three transactions per second, by the way, all this electricity consumption. Okay, and the, um, of course the interesting question is can we achieve Nakamoto's robustness but without having to pay expensive uh, proof of work? Okay, so we want to use Nakamoto's blockchain but remove the proof of work. Um, and to continue, I will very quickly talk about Nakamoto's blockchain protocol. I assume that many of you sort of already know how Nakamoto's blockchain works. And then I'll talk about how to remove the proof of work. Okay, well, this is, what is the blockchain? This is the blockchain. Okay, so how does Nakamoto's blockchain work? Say I, I, I have this blockchain, I want to extend it. What do I do? Uh, here are the transactions I want to confirm. I'm going to take a hash function. I hash um, the block I want to extend, the transactions I want to confirm, and the puzzle solution, which is the screen jigsaw puzzle piece. Um, and if the hash outcome is less than B, which is a difficulty parameter, then the screen guy is a good puzzle solution. And luckily, I get to mine the next block. Okay. Um, and the assumption is that this H is like a random oracle, it's a random function. So the best, thing, best way for me to find a puzzle solution is through brute force. I'm going to try many of the green guys until I find one that satisfies the solution. Um, and of course, trying many of these green um, jigsaw puzzle pieces is going to be expensive, and that's where the proof of work happens. Okay, and the important aspect of the blockchain protocol is that people, if you see forks, you are going to pick the longest chain. And that's important for security because let's say if Dan uh, maybe paid me some money to buy my, uh, I don't know, Alfa Romeo, my car, uh, um, and now, now he wants to erase his transaction to double spend his money, um, he needs to basically mine a longer fork, right? And if he doesn't have enough computation power, he is never able to mine a longer chain, and therefore he cannot erase the past. Okay, so essentially if the transaction is embedded deep enough in the chain, it is considered to be secure enough, um, and it can be considered to be confirmed. Okay, so that's just very quickly how, how Bitcoin's blockchain protocol works. And uh, I want to focus on how to remove the proof of work. Um, one thing interesting that we realized is that proof of work is kind of a leader election process. So if you want to remove the proof of um, work, one idea is to restrict the puzzle space, right? In Bitcoin, you have to try many, many puzzle solutions until you find a valid one. But what if, um, okay, we've already explained the, the protocol. Let, let's assume we are in a permission setting, right? Um, we have a set of nodes. And everyone knows everyone's public key. Okay. This is a permission setting, not permissionless. Okay, so this was how Nakamoto worked. But now we want to restrict the puzzle space. So what do we do? Um, so imagine we are this round phase protocol. And in every round, we want to elect a leader. And we don't want people to try many puzzle solutions. So the puzzle solution is basically your own identity, right? So let's say download. Dan wants to be elected as a leader, and he's going to take this hash function, hash his ID and the current round number, and if the outcome is less than the difficulty parameter, and he is then the leader. And if he is the leader, he can basically take a secret key, he can sign the block he wants to extend with the set of transactions he wants to confirm, and the current round, round number. And this allows him to mine a new block, and everyone can verify that the block is correct by verifying that indeed Dan is the leader of this round and that he signed all of these things correctly. Okay, so this like, seems like 
a nice idea, right? But the question is whether this protocol gives you security. Um, well, I guess the answer is no. This is a trick question. And there are two reasons why this protocol is insecure. Uh, one is that if Dan is elected in some round, he can use this credit multiple times. Like all his nodes are only going to use um, this credit once, but the adversary can use it multiple times. And then the second issue is that all his nodes are only going to mine in the present, right? Every round, I'm going, only going to use the current round number, but whereas adversary can use future round numbers. So the adversary has much more choices than all his nodes, and that's not fair to the all his nodes. Okay, so to fix the protocol, our idea is to add some constraints for timestamps in the blockchain. So uh, we'll, how do we do it? Uh, first, we require that in the valid blockchain, these timestamps, these round numbers have to strictly increase. No repeat, right? So this prevents the adversary from reusing the same round number twice in the same chain. Uh, and also, we, like, um, like I said, we want to prevent mining in the future. So all these nodes are only going to accept the chain if all the timestamps are not in the future, are in the present or in the past. Okay, so, so these constraints, you know, intuitively they seem to constrain the adversary a lot. But of course, the question still remains, right? Is the protocol secure after these fixes? Okay, so this actually is a non-trivial question. The answer is actually yes, but the proof is non-trivial. Okay. Um, and one reason why the proof is non-trivial is because, um, like, even, even though we, you know, the previous works have proven Nakamoto's blockchain secure, it turns out that in this protocol, the adversary has more choices than in Nakamoto's blockchain. So in our paper, we have a detailed proof that shows how to um, how these like stochastic results still hold despite these um, new attacks. Okay. Uh, so like I said, the previous uh, known Nakamoto blockchain analysis basically don't work in our setting, um, and I'm going to skip the proof in the interest of time. Um, if you want to learn about the proof, you should look at our paper. Um, the paper also contains additional results, like how to remove the random oracle, how to achieve stronger notions of security, like the protocol I talked about has only static security, um, but if you want to adapt adaptive security, you have to do something more. Okay. Uh, applications, of, uh, applications of the CP consensus protocol, uh, consortium blockchain, right? Remember I said about the distributed ledger um, among multiple banks. And you can also use CP consensus protocol to build a proof of stake protocol. So we have another paper called Snow White, which basically takes the CP consensus protocol and we show how to do robust committee re reconfiguration over time to reflect the current, uh, such that the committee reflects the current state distribution so we can get a proof of state protocol. Okay, all right. To, to conclude, uh, we have come a very long way. Right? We started about, we started here, um, these classical distributed systems, uh, like within Google and Facebook. Um, and now we are in this exciting new world where we want to build internet scale distributed systems. We want to trade with other people that we don't know uh, on the internet. And there are so many exciting open problems, like even just for consensus itself, our understanding um, of distributed consensus on this, in this large scale is fairly little. Okay. Um, before I end, I want to mention that we have this exciting event following Asia Group in Shenzhen. And, and this is um, generously sponsored by Andy Yao and Tsinghua, uh, and um, co-organized by Tsinghua, Cornell, and uh, Illinois. Uh, so I think some of you, uh, I'll see you guys there. Okay, all right. Thanks. Thanks. So, um, is there a difference between the sleeping model and just saying that messages can be arbitrarily long delayed? Because it seems when you're asleep, you're, it's the same as just not getting your messages for the time. Um, that's a very good question. I think. One fundamental difference is like uh, you, you actually don't know how many people are going to show up in the CP model. So what you are asking is more close to the classical asynchronous model where the message delay can be arbitrarily long. 
But these protocols require uh, knowing exactly how many nodes are there because uh, so so for instance we know that in the classical asynchronous setting we can design protocols secure against one third corruption. And the way these protocols work is that I know n people want to participate in the protocol. I'm going to have everyone vote. I will count uh, two thirds times n number of votes, and I do something like I do some I'm, I take some action, and then people vote again. And again, I wait like for two thirds of people. So the, the point is that in the sleeping model, there may be some that will never wake up. Right. So in the sleeping model, if you do this, it's not going to work because I'm expecting two thirds times n people to vote, but only one percent show that, and the your protocol will just hang there forever. Okay. Maybe one more question. Okay. So you have talking about uh, you are trying to uh, elect a leader to sign a next chain, but if what if the leader is elected is not online? Um, so that, that's a that's a good question. So I didn't talk about difficulty adjustment. Potentially you can do difficulty adjustment. Right now the protocol slows down if fewer people are online. It's because you are doing random selection, right? So eventually you elect someone who's online and that guy is going to sign the block. But it is true that if let's say only half of the people are there, the protocol slows down by a factor of two. Right? If if I don't adjust the path of difficulty time enough. But at some point Maybe there is not enough people online. You probably don't know it was stuck there because you don't have the chance to to adjust the parameters. Well, as long as some of these nodes are online, eventually that node is going to get elected. Right? Let's say uh, only let's only one node is online. So in expectation, every n, n number of rounds, if I'm going to elect it, uh, the, the protocol, uh, let's say uh, roughly speaking, okay, I'm going to elect a leader um, every round, right? So after linear number of rounds. The honest guy is still going to get elected. And when he gets elected, he's going to make progress. But of course, the protocol slows down by a factor of n unless you do proper difficulty adjustment. And it is indeed possible to do difficulty adjustment in a sleepy type, in a sleepy like protocol. And so, for instance, Nakamoto's blockchain has this difficulty adjustment mechanism that looks at the, the block generation rate in the past two weeks and it will set the mining difficulty parameter accordingly for the next, like, um, I think it's like. 2015 block, which is like roughly two weeks. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Larry.